Jackson. When you've won awards in soccer, football, throughout your career, whether they be team awards, championships, titles, or personal awards, on uh, on a couple of different continents, uh, both professionally, uh, throughout your youth, and uh, also in college, uh, it's worth a mention. And we are fortunate to have in Colorado, uh, homegrown super talent, uh, on the show today. Welcome to Sporting Denver, Kristen. Hamilton. Hammy, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm great. Yeah, hanging in there. <laughs> I mentioned uh, in, the, in, in one of our promos, um, Julie Doyle medal. Could you uh, tell us all about that? Um, yeah, so I this off, past off season, I went and played in Australia and uh, a I actually wasn't aware of the award before I went down there, but I got a call when I was just in Utah and they told me that I won the award, which is essentially the MVP of the season when I was there. So um, that was a pleasant surprise and a nice call to get. That Yeah, f- fantastic. And congratulations from, uh, from myself and uh, everybody everybody in Colorado. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> uh, how, did, how did you get? to uh to play for the um western sydney wanderers how, how did that materialize um it's kind of a really good partnership that the nwsl has with the w league down there is that um it just works perfectly with our seasons kind of so right. you know with the nwsl ending in november and then their season kind of picking up at the end of november it was just a it's always been a good opportunity for players in this league to go and continue to have an income, um, make some money and also continue to play games in your off season. So, um, for me, I've wanted to play there for a couple of years and I just ended up getting the opportunity. Uh, I had a good season last year at the courage. So, um, they kind of sure. just reached out and it worked out. Oh, that's fantastic. What, what's the Australian uh, women's league setup? What, what's it like in comparison to what we have here in the States? Um, it's actually almost identical the way they have nine teams. Um, they play, I, they play a lot less games. They p- only play, I want to say it was a total of 14, 15 games. Um, okay. Whereas here in the NWSL, we end up playing with the championship and stuff end up being like 24, um, 26 games, I actually believe. So a lot less games, but um, same amount of teams and then same amount of teams make playoffs. Um, and it's four teams in the playoffs and then you just have a semi and a final. Um, but yeah, compared like to the NWSL, I'd say quality is definitely a little bit a little bit lower than sure. uh, the competitiveness here in the NWSL. I think America is unique in the amount of depth that we have in right. the player pool. So for them, it's it's a good way for young players um, to get that professional experience before some go to college, some uh, some have come to actually Colorado, University of Colorado. I played with a girl who was Australian that played there. So um yeah, it's just it's a a little bit younger of a league, and the demographic in the league's a little bit younger. So I would just say quality wise, it's a little bit less, but it's pretty comparable. And I, and I think it is growing as uh, you've probably played alongside and pr- maybe against, well, definitely against some of the Matildas. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so it is growing. Uh, yeah. Did did you get an insight in, in into that growth of the game from? I know you're only there a short period of time. Uh, did did you get a sense of that growth? Of the um, game. I, I think for me, I've played with and against, like you said, some of the Matildas, um, whether it was in the NWSL or I played with one of the girls, um, Amy Harrison, who is currently in and out of the squad um, in Western Sydney. So not necessarily, I guess, from experience of how I, how it felt when I was there, but just through conversations, I would say that that's kind of where I did the more learning on kind of the growth of the game there. But yeah, I think it's definitely growing. Like the W league itself over there has become bigger than it was say four years ago when I knew players who were going there and they weren't getting anybody to any game. So, um, that that that's a great insight for maybe uh, so, so some players transitioning between, you know, the uh, the league here, uh, the availability perhaps to go and uh, continue playing uh, d- down under. 
Yeah, I was going to say it's I think it's I think it would be a really good um, kind of middle ground between college and then playing the NWSL. Like you're saying, it's Get it's it. hard to break into an NWSL um, roster. You know, there's just not sure. very many spots and it's really competitive. And like I said, the depth here in the U.S. is insane. So. Um, I think it's a lot. It w- it is a lot easier to go and play over there and get minutes and kind of get some games at a higher level than college would be. Um, kind of prepare you maybe for this league. That's tremendous advice, um, Sydney. Um, that's not your name, Hammy. I know it's not Sydney. I'm not calling <laughs> you Sydney. Uh, Sydney, the city. What's it like? What, uh, what what did you experience there? What was cool about it? Oh, it was beautiful. Um, we. I was a little bit inland um there's kind of a here's the coast and there's a little river that goes through um west and we were obviously western sydney so we were right. um, in a little bit just like kind of on the edge of that water but it was amazing you could just hop on the ferry right outside our apartments and you know you just hop on and takes you right into the city it's like a 30 minute ferry ride so the city was massive <laughs> i think it was bigger than yeah. i expected um yeah. traffic was terrible <laughs> that was yeah that was probably my least favorite part of all of sydney and just right. being there i was like this is it was brutal um but in terms of the city it's just so multicultural there's yeah. so many different it was so diverse um the the food was amazing um the people were great I, yeah i loved it i would definitely go back food come on then what is it come on <laughs> uh thai food the thai food was the right. best <laughs> it was so good yeah, any of their – I had Thai pretty much all the time. <laughs> did you – talking to the city, uh, Hammy, did you uh, get to see any of their – what we all see on TV or the promos, did you ever – did you get to see any of their major sites, Opera House oh, yeah. or anything like that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Opera House was a big one. Um, I had my family actually come visit. My, my grandma came Fantastic. down and my mom and sister got to come out. So um did a lot of touristy sightseeing you know did it myself when i first got there and the other americans that were with me and and then also did it a couple more times with with the visitors that came but yeah and for house is just as stunning in pictures um it's it's a really good structure um was able to take the tours of of the buildings there they have really cool botanical gardens that um, was really like right in the middle of the city that you could just walk through that that was um, a really cool spot um, and then just being able to travel so obviously with playing I get to go and stay in all these different cities so I got to go and stay a couple extra days in Brisbane a couple days in Melbourne um, a couple Brilliant. extra days in Perth uh, so it, it was a really cool experience and the coaches were um, really understanding of you know, we are here also to kind of see the world. And so they would let us stay an extra day or two um, and get to see different cities. So that was cool. That is fantastic. I know the answer to my next question. Would you go back? <laughs> yes. So. Yes, I would. I, it's such an incredible experience in the country and the people. It's just beautiful. Did you watch any cricket out there? I watched... <laughs> half not even half of a game probably on tv it right. was um Slow. interesting i had yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's different you yeah. know each their own but um it was fun to kind of learn about a different sport because i never see that on tv here in the states so uh, yeah. um it's something that i was completely unfamiliar with so it was kind of fun to learn but terrific short- experience <laughs> <laughs> terrific experience in your soccer career uh Different continent, the culture, the food, the people, and the sights, and you're going back. We'll catch up at some <laughs> other stage when you do go back for a full report Hopefully. on that. So, um, in 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 terms of uh, you mentioned college, in, uh, how, how did that that uh, that that bit start? Uh, where did you go to college? I went to the University of Denver. Yeah. Um, I had played for Jeff Hooker who's yep. been the coach there for 25, 30 years yep. now. Um, so I played for him, actually. He was my club coach for a year or two when I was growing up, um, yep. when I was like 10 years old, probably. Sure. Um, so, I mean, just through kind of knowing him and feeling comfortable with him, you know, I didn't actually think I would ever go to college in Colorado. I was always told myself that I wanted to go out of state. I wanted to get away and just try something new. and then. Um, I mean, Jeff kind of persuaded me and I'm very happy.
It was a great time. I think I broke up a little bit there. Hammy, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, so apologies for that. Okay. So, so uh, you made a bit of history there, prolific goal scoring, a lot of stuff. Uh, I've got it written down here. I, I, I know about it. So uh, do you want to tell our viewers what uh, what that process went through and uh, your career there? Uh, yeah, I, it might sound bad, but I, I probably couldn't sit here and name and list off no. awards or records broken or whatever it was. But just in terms of my career there, I think um, I probably could have gone to a, a bigger college, a bigger soccer school maybe, but I just had the time of my life. It was amazing. Um, I was able to play with three, four of my other teammates that I played club soccer with. I think that was um, cool. really important in my success um, personally there, but as well as the other girls, it was Shannon Johnson, Nicola DiGiacomo and um, Jesse Batelli. So us four together, um, getting it, being able to play together when we've played together since we were 10 years old, I'm, I think brought some chemistry to the team that sure. was pretty unique at the time. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I had a great career. Um, I was able to score goals and, yes. um, grow as a player and as a person. And I, I mean, I had a blast. Everybody could read up on this. You did make history by, uh, <laughs> um, quite a few things there. Prolific goal scorer. Uh, I'll, I'll let some of our viewers catch up on that with um, the report and the research that we did on you. Uh, phenomenal is the word I'm coming up with for you on that one, Hammy. Absolutely phenomenal. So progressing from college, uh, did you have aspirations? That you, I wanted to play pro. I've done, I've done my college. I've done my education. I, I want to play pro. What, what, what pathway did you take from there? So I feel like I... Growing up, you know, obviously ODP was a big thing and I just never really bought into it. I was just never, you know, committed right. to it. I was never like, oh, I'm going to be in this system. And I, to be fair, I wasn't, I don't feel like very informed on the process to one, getting to the national team or youth national teams. Um, right. I just felt like I didn't want to do ODP because I went to one ODP session and they put me at outside back <laughs> and I said, uh -oh. I don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just, yeah, I just didn't feel like it was for me. So um, I, in that sense, I wasn't really, didn't really have aspirations to be on the national team. I always thought it was cool, but um, I guess I, I probably just didn't know what that would be like. Um but in terms of playing pro, I think my whole life, you're as a kid and they ask you what you want to be when you grow up. And I would always write down pro soccer player. Right. Um, I think most athletes do at a young age. You're always, I want to be pro. I want to be pro. So yeah. um, to some extent, I obviously did have that aspiration. Um, I think I, I always said, so the pro leagues were really um, turbulent at the yeah. time. Right. You know, there's a league and then three years had fold and then another league yeah. and then it'd fold. And so for me, it didn't feel like it was a stable path for me to go and play pro the end of right. was, you know, become really stable, which is fantastic for women's soccer in general. And I think that'll just foster the desire in younger players to want to play pro because there's an actual pathway to get there. And there's a league that's, stable and you're able to play in so yeah, i think I from that. my viewpoint as a young younger player i just didn't think that that was really a viable option until you know the end of cell came up and everyone's like you want to go enter the draft um and my mindset was kind of yeah i'll enter the draft and if i get drafted i'll go play and if i don't get drafted eh, like i i probably <laughs> won't go try out for a team all right. Um, I'm very glad I got drafted because obviously been playing for six, seven years now. So yeah. Who'd you get drafted by then? Talk us through uh, to where you are right now with the courage. Yeah. So I got drafted to the Western New York Flash at the time. Um, I was the absolute last draft pick, <laughs> which doesn't matter. So that tells me, <laughs> Amy, that tells me they got it totally wrong, right? <laughs> exactly. There you go. Uh, I mean, hey, we got, I got here. Um, I got drafted. You know, a lot of players don't. So um, at the sure. time, it was only 32 girls in the nation that were being drafted. And 
because it's wow. it was eight teams, couple four rounds. Um, it just yeah. wasn't very many. So like to even be in that top thirty five is was pretty incredible. So I yeah. got drafted to Western New York. Um, got there, um, freezing cold. It was in Buffalo. <laughs> that was um, a time I, I had never lived away from Colorado. So. But it's cold. Not it's cold. The best it's cold. Place. Nah, <laughs> cold. It was cold. It was cold. Um, but I actually ended up tearing my ACL um, oh. my first year. Um, so it was in my first preseason game with the Flash. Ended up tearing my ACL, so that was a bummer because I'd never been injured at all ever in my college career. That right. nothing. So to go from that to being in a pretty serious injury was that yeah. was tough, but. Um, I was determined to get back. So next year I just stayed in touch with the coach and um, went back for preseason and ended up earning a contract. Good for you. Got signed in 2015 was my first year. And then 2016 rolls around. We get a new coach. We were predicted to be eighth in the league and we end up winning the championship. So that was, that was a wild season that was insane um yeah that was crazy i mean i could spend hours talking about just that season in general but um so our team went from like zero to hero pretty quick and then we end up getting sold um our whole franchise got sold down to north carolina which is where i've been ever since so i've this is my gonna be my geez i don't even know this is gonna be my sixth season in general so my yeah. fourth season in north carolina what yeah. was uh, yeah, yeah. hey with, uh Hammy, with the flash if mm-hmm. you could pick out maybe a, a cup from from zero to hero right <laughs> champions thanks very much if you could pick out a couple of things that that made that chemistry on the team a couple of standout things that that made that happen what would they be i think having just really humble players. We didn't have any of the big name national team players at the time. Um, you know, who some might tell you they've some egos and, um, there's, there's no ego. Like our team was just blue collar. We're just going to put our head down and work because we're not that good. So we better outwork our, our, our opponents at the time. So, um, I think just the overall, um, makeup of the team and and kind of who we had but also we got a new coach that year and paul riley he's from liverpool um i'm sorry yeah <laughs> what a liverpool paul. man yeah, what a paul. He, uh, yeah he's uh very proud very proud to be from liverpool of course um yeah but um he yeah he took us over and it changed everything um we had gone from a coach who kind of tore apart our confidence a little bit um in 2015 no one was playing their best soccer no one really wanted to come back and play because we just weren't having fun it just wasn't a good time we weren't very good um it just it just was not what i didn't think anybody had in mind when they talked about becoming pro so when we get a new coach and he comes in and he's just he tells you he just wants you to play how you play you got here for a reason and you know, you do what you do and he'll put the pieces together and figure it out from there. But he doesn't want to change us as players, um, obviously, besides help us grow and what we're good at. But, um, yeah, it was just a, a nice change of pace and a change of mindset where everybody just felt more free and relaxed and confident to go out and perform like we knew we could. Sure. So um, I think that was a big factor in that as well and then yeah i mean he's obviously a great coach and we've had a lot of success under him humble fun change your game plan go and enjoy yourself play to your <laughs> talents mm-hmm. uh my name's paul i'm a scouser i'm from liverpool here's the big picture championship mm-hmm. right yep so it's not rocket science congratulations to you on that one and congratulations to paul i've got a lot of friends up in liverpool in fact one or two still owe me about 10 quid so i've got to chase those up so um what were your thoughts when um the whole the whole place was moving down to north carolina what happened there to be honest i think everyone's just kind of excited (laughs) um, 
Buffalo, our situation, just like the setup, wasn't ideal, really. We were playing, we were training every day in Buffalo and then having to bus up to Rochester for our home games, home which games, yeah. people aren't aware. It's an hour and a half bus ride sure. to get to our home games. And so just little things like that it just wasn't ideal. And then Buffalo as a whole just wasn't, I always say, it wasn't really youth friendly. <laughs> it wasn't just much going on. We were young. We we're 20s, you know, young, late, yeah. early 20s. Yeah. And there just wasn't much happening in the city. And, you know, obviously you're there for your job and to play, but you also want to have fun off the pitch as well. So um, for us, I think we were all just excited. We are like, okay, it's something new, like change of pace. Let's see what it's like. And we knew North Carolina is just a hotbed for women's soccer. It's got Absolutely. four massive soccer schools around here that sure. obviously – you know, everyone's pretty well aware of. So for us to come into an area that we knew would we would draw the fans that we, we thought we would deserve. And it's a little bit warmer. It's Yeah, that's the one downfall. It is very hot here. <laughs> Extreme to freezing to yeah. like quite a bit of it's humidity. Hot, yeah. So, uh, well, you, 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 you're well angled in there to playing in diverse weather conditions. Yeah. So that is very, very commendable. <laughs> So you've won a title with the courage. Won a couple. I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, we've been can, can, Sorry, just guys. just a quick one. And apologies. That's fine. Um, question I've always wanted to ask: a double title winner. Is there a difference between the first one and the second one? Yes. Far away. Absolutely. Absolutely. Far away. Um, for us, the first one was so unexpected and i think we'll never forget that but the second one was so in between our wins we had one where we made the finals and we lost in the finals to portland right. um so i think having that kind of chip on your shoulder after that you make it there again and you lose it's you just yeah. want to get back at it and you want to start next season again and you want to get back to that same position and we put ourselves back in that same position and we smashed portland yeah. When we went back and played them at home in the championship game and that um, that second one, the first one was unexpected and, you know, we didn't necessarily, we probably didn't deserve to win that game. Okay, honestly, we were losing yeah. up until, honestly, like we were losing up until legitimately two seconds, a few seconds left in the game. They kicked off and we ended up going to PKs. So right. it was within seconds that we, that we secured that game. Um, and then the next next one we won was so just like with authority, you know, we, we came out, we won and we smashed them and playing Portland at home. If people aren't aware, go watch a video of Portland's home crowds. It's insane. That's, it I is. would say that's the one place you feel like you're a true professional athlete. Sure. Um, the atmosphere is just incredible. And to hear all those fans cheering for them and it's just silence when you score is just like one of the best. <laughs> it's so, it's such a cool feeling. So, um, I, so, yeah, I mean, I guess in terms of the way you win it, um, but for us, I mean, playing, like I said, Portland at home, uh, that's a memorable moment as well. But um, I, I don't think winning – I don't think you ever get sick of winning. At least I, I would never get no. sick of winning. I could win 10 championships and I'd remember them all for different reasons and I would want to win an 11th. So your mindset changed from probably getting a bit lucky in the – the first championship to that one, which was all gun bla all, all guns blazing, mm -hmm. was that was that a unified right through the team to say, okay, we we've got one, we've got to get another. Did that mindset just change, and did that affect like practices and the togetherness of the team as well? Yeah, I think after the first championship we had, it was like you said, it was kind of yeah, we got lucky with that, but we can play with the best teams you know, yeah and now we we know that and so the next year we went out and we tweaked some things um changed the formation and uh you know got a couple players in lost a couple players but really just kept a core of the group and i think one of the most important things for us as the north carolina courage we've been so successful as um as north carolina that we haven't lost that blue collar work ethic that we had when we were predicted to be eighth in the nbsl when we were with the flash and for us keeping that core group together and understanding that that's where we came from is just like keeps you hungry to never one, never slip back into being in that spot again, but two, just to like continue to get better. And so for us, yeah, it absolutely changed trainings. It absolutely changed our mindsets and 
Paul has kind of instilled in us that we don't really want to look for results. And so I think that our team is pretty unique in that we aren't really result driven. It's more performance driven. And for us, it's how can we improve? How can we get better from game to game, whether we win, whether we lose or draw, what can we learn from that game and how can we capitalize on the next game and how can we improve that game? And I think if we put a full performance together, a full nine together, we will get the result in the end, but we never put the emphasis on winning. He would never sit us down in a room and be like, we have to win today ever. He would never be like, he never talks about wins and losses. He wouldn't be like, yeah, we have to win today. We need the three points. We need whatever. He's like, I don't look at the table. We just need to perform how I know we can perform. And in turn, the results will come. So I think he's shifted kind of a lot of people's mindset. And I think right. from college, from youth, whatever, you're always talking about wins and losses and whatever. But Paul has done a good job of kind of instilling in us that if, if we perform, it'll come. Roll your sleeves up, work hard perform yeah. have a bit of fun the rest will follow yeah. i like that i like that yeah. that's that that's um mm. that's a winning uh winning little trip there so mm. um colorado native uh in yeah. your youth um what did uh, wh- when did it start oh man i started playing when i was like four i just had a neighbor who played and I asked my mom if I could play because it looked like fun. (laughs) She signed me up and I uh, never stopped. Um, And then I played for Rush when I was really little. Um, And then there was a club called Colorado Girls Soccer Academy. I don't know if you remember that. Um, Yeah, uh, that was part of Jeff. Uh, Jeff was involved in that. And I think Nick uh, Cavara and a few people. Yeah, great organization. Yeah, so uh, my best friend... It, Nick Cavar is her stepdad, so I'm I'm really close with Nick as well. Um, sure. Nick and the Cavars, and obviously Jeff Hooker, and then the Devikers. Yep. Um, Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So we were with Colorado Girls Soccer Academy. Um, that folded, ended up moving, and we ended up having to go to Storm. Sure. So then we finished out at Storm um, with Scott Deviker as our coach, Scott yep. and Kristen. Um, oh man, he. I always give him so much credit to to where I'm at my career. Him and Kristen both, him and his wife. Um, yeah, they were great. It's almost the same um, work ethic that Paul has kind of instilled in us here is that I feel like I've always had coaches who have kind of done that for us, and we ran so much <laughs> with Scott. I'm sure yeah. you've heard. He, yeah. uh, he likes his fitness, and oh, yeah. um, he is not going to have it if you're going to be lazy on the field, if you're not going to put the work in. So um, I have so much love and respect for him and Kristen and what they've done for my career, for sure. That was um, the the Girls Soccer Academy here in Colorado. Mm-hmm. That was, oh, I'm going back probably 12, 13, maybe 14 years. It was yeah. unique in its, it's just a girls, it's four girls. Yeah. What? What what was your concept of that coming from you know a large organisation mixed male female boys and girls to to that environment? How did you feel about that? To be honest, I was I feel like I was fairly young and I don't necessarily. I I mean I obviously remember the training stuff. One of the biggest things I remember going to um, Colorado Girls Soccer Academy was that we got to see all of the higher level girls teams training often yeah. we we're all in the same kind of area over at clement and stuff and um sure. i remember just sitting and watching some of those trainings and thinking how good some of them were and watching kristen de Dyker. she would train with us she would play with us and um obviously at the time she was a pro she was professional with the atlanta beat and That's um, right. yeah so she had so much experience and just seeing female athletes around yep. you that are older than you and you just look up to so much because one you know you're both you're women and you are seeing how strong and fast and technical yeah. and just good they are at soccer right now it's like it's you just kind of aspire to be like them and around them um i think it is important to for young girls to play with boys as well though i don't think sure. it's you know i think it's important for girls to have role models to look up to that are women as well but i think it's in for a developmental standpoint, you know, Nicola de Giacomo, for instance, I shot, yeah. she played with boys her whole life and you just saw the difference in her, her, um, her growth as a player, uh, when she was. So, um, 
I think there's pros and cons of both, but I do think it was it was a pretty cool experience. I um, I want to ask you throughout your uh, playing career, youth and adult professional, of course, or even college. Talk us through your favourite goal. Oh, my favourite goal. I've seen a few as well. One or two are absolute cool, Kazami. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Um, it could be emotional or spectacular, technical, whatever. Your call. Yeah. So there's probably three that like really come to mind, but one I'll just quickly in college. Um, we were playing Purdue and we were losing 2-0 and we ended up, um, it was a one sorry two to one and then like the last 10 seconds of the game we get a free kick like just above half field and we had a girl who could just absolutely launch it so we just all go into the box and launch it in i end up scoring with it went over the line like as the buzzer went off wow so we ended up tying the game um actually now that i say that i think we actually end up winning the game we tied it two two and then we end up winning the game on that goal with the last like literally literally the last second of the game so that was kind of cool fantastic um, yeah that was fun and then probably my first professional goal would be one that it's just kind of um stuck with me ever since i had a rough couple years and i just in terms of wasn't getting a ton of playing time um was having to kind of reinvent what i what i imagined um, my professional career to be um you know embracing the roles i was given but then being ready for the opportunity and um i was given the opportunity against boston um and went out and scored within the first, I think it was like five minutes of the game, Get got my in. first goal. So Get it was in. like, it was really cool. It was just kind of to like cement the fact that like I am doing like what I, what I'm supposed to be doing and, and, and all the work that I put in off the field, waiting for this moment sure. paid off. Well, you've been doing it ever since. Uh, <laughs> I want to... Uh... We've had shooting practice today, so I'm going to get the first hat trick, which I always do. I book people anyway, Anna, you know that. <laughs> so I'm going to say a thank you, thank you, thank you. There's the hat trick of thank yous uh, for being on the show. Uh, spectacular your career, genuine person, terrific character, both on and off the field. And I do know you do a lot of work off the field. We'll catch up later and talk about that some other time. But I can't let you go until you do our quick fire five, okay. our five questions. And um, first one, simple. What boots do you wear? I wear the Adidas X's. Yes. I'm an Adidas fan. Yeah, so. me, too, Paul, me too. Paul probably says Adidas as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah got, got that. Ah, Adidas, fantastic. Uh, player growing up, did you connect to a player growing up, whether it be, you know, just a youth player or even a pro, uh, pro player, role, role model player growing up? Um, I would probably say Kristen DeVecker, uh, just having a professional, Makes another sense. women's professional around you around. So, her. Uh, again, right through your career, youth career, whatever, right through to pro. And who's your toughest ever opponent? Uh, who's given you the most most difficulties? Could be a youth in player. In terms of be... just one player who I've, who I've yeah. against? Yeah. Yeah. Who? Um, I'd probably say in the pros, um, probably Becky Sauerbrunn. <laughs> Becky Sauerbrunn and then the two defenders, off, honestly, the two center backs on our team, which are Abby Ersing and Abby Dahlkemper. All yeah. three of them are just world-class center backs. So... I mean, they make you better every day. I'm going to ask you. Uh, this is not in the quick fire five. Okay. Have you ever have you ever nutsed them in practice? Just the once. Nobody's listening uh, right now. Of course. Moving on swiftly. Thanks for that. <laughs> uh, if you were staying in the game at the end of your career, and hopefully it prolongs and goes on, uh, would you have a pathway within the game that you think? Oh, I'd like to do this. I'd like to do that to stay in the game. Have you have you thought about that in in in, in those terms? Um, in terms of like where I would want to play or position wise. No, or no I'm, kind of... I'm, I'm thinking towards the end of your career. Um, would you like to go into coaching, media, commentating, mm. being on Sporting Denver, stuff like that? <laughs> you know? 
Um, I have, I did actually did a little color commentary for one of the, uh, Denver games a little while back. So that could be fun. Um, probably isn't my first short pathway in, but yeah, I like coaching. I like doing smaller group sessions, little individual sessions with sure. players rather than coaching a full team probably. But, um, yeah, I think coaching would probably be in the, in the cards for me. So you got a bit of a big spectrum of maybe maybe not yeah. i could yeah yeah nothing wrong with that many doors open <laughs> yeah I can keep it up <laughs> and the last one um what did it feel like and we've just seen that uniform yeah. what did it feel like walking out for your country and that is my last question i'm going to leave it with you after you've answered this hammy if you could leave our crew with uh, with a message Right now, what's it, what's it like walking out for your country? It's pretty indescribable. Um, I think in that moment, I I was almost in tears just because I think I took a very unconventional path to that moment. So a lot of waiting, a lot of waiting for my chance and my turn, um, a lot of hard work, hours put in on the field, off the field, um you know a lot of thinking that that moment would never come and when the chance finally came it was just a little overwhelming um it, but it, of course just playing for your country is the highest honor and um that is 100 a moment i'll never forget oh and my parting words um well first of all thank you for having me here <laughs> i would just say in in the climate that this world is in, just stay safe, stay healthy, um, continue to follow your dreams and love one another.